Hey guys, welcome to your YouTube channel where we talk all about Kate. Welcome back. We are studying DBMS and so far we have understood all the basic concepts related to DBMS that we need to know in order to start with our actual study of DBMS. Uh, this video onwards, I'm going to begin with the very first unit uh, which is normalization. Uh, if you would have seen the very first video of this DBMS series, I had classified the syllabus of DBMS into multiple categories. One of such categories was database design. So we are starting our, our first unit from the database design. Uh, in the previous video, if you would have understood uh, the concept of relation, uh, what is the relation in, in terms of RDBMS and uh, why a table is known as relation, uh, what is the basic concept behind it and uh, what is the structure of relation, what are the attributes and properties of relation and certain questions we, had so we have uh, solved about it. Uh, so uh, that concept will be definitely taken forward uh, here onwards because we, we will be addressing everything in terms of relation and its attributes. So let's understand normalization. Normalization, uh, I would say it's a process uh, which, is, uh, which is used to uh, reduce the level of redundancy in a relation. Uh, redundancy, the term is coming ag again. Let me just briefly define redundancy. The repetition of fact, repetition of the data uh, in relation or in database is known as redundancy. It is redundant. It is getting repeated again and again the same value. The meaning of the value would remain the same. It just the number of places it will appear in your database will increase. So we try to minimize that and in order to minimize that the process which we follow is known as normalization. Uh, it was a very basic term. Uh, in order to understand normalization we need to understand the concept of normal forms. We need to understand the concept of normal forms. In order to understand the concept of normal forms, we need to understand the concept of key. You would have termed, uh, you would have heard the term primary key, uh, foreign key, uh, candidate key, etc, etc. So all those terms are related here, finding out the key of the relation. And in order to find out what is the key of a given relation, we need to understand or we need to have the functional dependency present in the relation. Okay, so to perform normalization, you should know the normal forms concept. To have the normal form known of a relation, you should know the key of the relation. To know the key of the relation, you should have the functional dependency present in that relation. So it's all related stuff. This is an overall big concept and this is the basic term which leads us to that concept. Of course, so we have to start with a very really basic term that is functional dependency. What a functional dependency is? Functional dependency is a, is a way to define the relation between the attributes or it's it's a, it's a way that the database designer uses to let you understand the meaning between the attributes what a attribute mean to the other attribute uh, if i take a simple very simple example and student relation we have seen so far in that student relation we have the student roll number we have student name student branch student class a student college name etc etc so i say i can say that a student role number determines the value of a student name because every student will have its own name will have its own role number but the role number cannot be repeated right every student will have its own distinguished and distinct role number but they can be two students with the same name but both of them will have the different roll number. So student roll number can lead me to the student name. So it is a kind of functional dependency. One attribute is dependent on other attribute. Who is dependent? Student name is dependent. On whom it is dependent? Student roll number it is dependent. Or otherwise we can say that one attribute or set of attribute determines the value of other 
attribute. So a student roll number, if I say one, it will determine what should be the name of the student. That's what, in a very basic terms. So the database designer will use the meaning of attribute of the relation to specify functional dependency because database designer will know what is the meaning of each and every attribute in that particular relation. So he will be knowing the relation between the attributes that which one is going to determine which attribute. Functional dependency can also be said that it is a constraint on R between two sets of attributes. Constraint again a condition. It's a condition applied, applied between two set of attributes. Now I'm, I'm trying to define it more formally. The formal definition for functional dependency says that it is denoted by uh, this way. Uh, let's take x is a set of attribute y is a set of attribute and we use the arrow symbol to determine to define the functional dependency so this this entire alone is known as a functional dependency so it is denoted by this and it is a constraint and the constraint is that for any two tuples in r r is containing the attribute x and y it could be single attribute it could be set of attributes so I mean, you can see that R is containing X and Y. This is how the relation is defined. It can maybe, suppose it, it can have even more number of attributes, right? So uh, for any two tuples in R, T1 and T2, tuples you know, the records, okay? T1 and T2 that have T1 on X is equal to T2 on X. That means for tuple T1, the value X is getting repeated. So T2 is also having the value X. They must also have T1 Y and T2 Y. So whatever is the value of X for tuple T1 is the same value of X for the tuple T2. And if this is the condition and because X is functionally determining Y, then the value of Y should also be same in T1 and T2. In very simple words, the meaning is, if the two tuples have the same value of X, then both the tuples should also have the same value for Y. That's it. And, and how I can even more uh, explain it, in, in such a way, if, if this is true, then this functional dependency is true. And if this functional dependency is true, that X determines y or x functionally determines y we say that x is determinant and y is dependent x is determinant because x is determining the value of y y is dependent because y is getting determined by x and this can be also read as x functionally determines y this is the meaning all right now let now let's take this example and try to understand how the functional dependencies are present in this relation and how they are not present. Uh, so I have taken an example of a relation where the four attributes are present A, B, C, D. I have taken a small instance of the relation out of which we have to see the values of four attributes A, B, C, D and we have to check for the functional dependencies present or not present. So A, B, C, D uh, have these values. We have four tuples. The four records are there. Uh, I want to check whether B to C functional dependency is present here or not. That means B determines C is true or not. From the definition, just recall that B determines C will be true if for any two tuple, the value of B gets repeated, then the similar value of C should be repeated. That means wherever the value of B is present, same value of B is coming, the similar value of C should come. Let's check for that. We have the value of B as B1, okay, and the value of C is C1, okay. B1 is not getting repeated anywhere. Now let's check for the B2, the value of C is C2. Similarly, now you can see here very well, here, B2 is getting repeated, same value repeated. And if it is getting repeated, this should also get repeated and that is happening. It is B2 and C2 and it is also B2 and C2. Next tuple has B3 with C4. 
See, if the values are distinct of B, they can be any value of C. In fact, for two different values of B, they can be similar value of C. That's not a constraint. The constraint is only this, that if the value of B gets repeated, then the value of C has to be repeated because it says that B will determine what should be the value of C. And if B2 says that the value of C should be C2, then again B2 should say that the value of C should be C2 only. So from this instance, I can say that B2C is a true. This function dependency is present in this relation. Next, let's check for A to B. A1, B1, A1, B2. Here only we have got the conflict. The value of A1 is repeated, but that value of B is not repeated. For A1, we had B1. Here we should have A1 with B1, but it is having A1 with B2. Next, A2 with B2, A3 with B3. That's not the problem, but the issue has come right here that the value was getting repeated for A, but it was not getting repeated for B. So this functional dependency is not present in this particular relation. Next, uh, let's check for the B to A dependency. That means does B determine the value of A? We have B1, we have B2. B1 says A1, B2 says A1. We again have B2 and that says A2. So B2 getting repeated now. See, it depends who is your determinant. Whenever the determinant has to be repeated, dependent has to be repeated, which is again not happening in this case. So even this is not true. A, B2, C. See, I told you that the functional dependency can be present from the set of attribute to the set of attribute. And so here determinant is A, B together. It's a set of attribute. Let's check for A, B together. And for that matter, we need to check, we need to take that as one combination, A1, B1 together. A1, B1 and the value of C is C1. A1, B2, C2. A2, B2, C2, A3, B3, C4. None of the value of AB is getting repeated, right? It together has to be repeated. That is, it should be exactly same down, but it's not so. All the four values are distinct and in that case, there is no violation and so this is also true. Let's check for A, B to D. It's definitely going to be true. See how? Because again, this A, B pair is not getting repeated. The pair of A, B is not getting repeated. If this is not getting repeated, this value has not to be repeated. I mean, there cannot be a violation in that case, right? So this is also True. Let's check for C, D to B, whether it's true or not. Let's check for C, D as a pair, C1, D1, C2, D2, C2, D3, C4, D3. Again, this pair, all these pairs are distinct. So whenever they are coming up, the value of B, whatever it is, is not having any problem. So this is also true. Let's check for D to C, whether the functional dependency between D to C is present or not. You see, the value of D is D1, D2, D3, D3. Here is the repetition, D3, D3. But the value of C is not getting repeated. This is same, but this one is not same. And if it is not same, this is not true. So this functional dependency is not present in this relation. And this is how exactly, this is how uh, we find out which functional dependency is present, which functional dependency is not present in case we have the relation with us. And uh, these functional dependencies again are defined based on the meaning of attributes. Here you can just understand they are four attributes A, B, C, D, but whoever defines or declares the relation or the table and its attributes very much knows about what all attributes are having as its meaning and they know the the attribute who can determine who and who cannot determine who so this is this is what the example is like now quickly understand the type of functional dependencies possible there are uh, two types of functional dependencies one is a trivial functional dependency other is non-trivial functional dependency I think by name itself you can understand it very well. 
The trivial functional dependency says that x determines y is a functional dependency and it is trivial if and only if y is the subset of x. That means the y is nothing but then the part of x only. And the non-trivial functional dependency is uh, x determines y is non-trivial if and only if y is not the subset of x. That means y is distinct. It is something else than the x. For an example, if I say that a b determines a, then a is nothing but then the part of a b. This is my y and this is my x. So a is part of x only. So y is subset of x and this one becomes nothing but then the trivial functional dependency and also to know uh, trivial functional de dependencies are always true and always present because because they are the part of this only. So whatever value is getting repeated here, of course this value will be repeated, right? Because this is the part of this only. So trivial functional dependencies, <clears throat> I mean uh, this we just, just letting you know because it's there as a term. Uh, so, uh, but otherwise the trivial functional dependencies are always true and they need not to be defined. The one which are defined distinctly by the database designer are non-trivial functional dependencies, which may be true, which may not be true. So uh, that's what the concept about the types of functional dependencies and based on like, see, uh, gate exam is that they pick up just very small concept and they make a question out of it. And that there the beauty of the concept comes that how well you understand uh, the concept and you can solve that question. So from this concept, I have just picked one question. The question is like this, find the total number of functional dependencies that can be formed over a relation having degree n. The total number of functional dependencies that can be formed over a relation R which is having the degree n. Degree n means it has n attributes a1, b1, I mean a1, a2, a3, an, n attributes are there. And we know that functional dependencies can be formed by having a place here and a place here, right? You have to put set of attributes here and you have to put set of attributes here. And how many distinctive or different functional dependencies you can design is the question is trying to know. And it is of course talking that it will contain everything, means it will have the trivial functional dependencies, also it will have non-trivial functional dependencies and it's not talking about which is true, which is not true because it, you are not given any instance of the relation or from where you can compare the values and you can say oh this non-trivial functional dependency is not true so it cannot be formed no it's not so it's just talking in general terms how many whatever form of functional dependency you can form out of a relation who has a degree n and i am leaving this question like my previous video open to you that you have to you have to come up with the answer for this particular question and uh, of course in my next video I think I would come up with the answer but I really expect in the comment section below again once again that you, you make an effort to solve this you know that you have to fill this position and you have to fill this position you have total n attributes and you know that here you can have any combination of these attributes that's again nothing but then the subset you can make out of this and you can make subset out of this so that's only how you have to go. I have given you pretty much the hint. In fact, I guess almost I have solved it. So now you have to do your work. Okay, I'll see you very soon in the next video where we are going to solve the uh, standard uh, gate questions asked in the previous um, gate exams related to functional dependency and something more about the functional dependency which can lead to uh, key, the concept of key. Thank you so much uh, for watching this and please do share the video with your friends. Bye-bye.